Okay, so our plan of attack here. And um, I, I really, just to be completely honest and frank with this lovely group here that, uh, you know, I dated with some of you earlier, so I feel I can say this. Um, I struggle with this one a fair bit because there are, there are certainly tools out there that we can use, but there are, there are limits to things. And it's, this is where the issue comes in about um, what are you doing? Are you teaching physical literacy? Are you teaching phys ed? Are they the same? Are they different? How do, do you have to do one and then do the other? Or do they kind of mesh all together? So we'll kind of chat about those things. I'm hoping that we have time that you um, can create some things with some other people and take a look at that. That's my plan. I've got some materials here. Uh, hopefully I have enough sheets. But um, so I'll go through some, a few things. So I, I want to know what you know first. So we'll take some time, just a couple minutes to get what you know. Um, I want to look a little bit at the purpose of assessment. And we're going to look at it for a little bit from a physical literacy standpoint and from a program of studies standpoint, because that's what we're legally mandated to teach. So we'll go into there. Um, a brief look at some tools, but these are widely available online. I will talk a little bit more about Passport for Life, which I'm sure Glenn mentioned yesterday as well. Incidentally, if, if you are teaching grades three to six and you have not yet signed up, to be part of the Passport for Life thing. I, I'll share the, the web link later. Did you talk about that at all yesterday? Okay. And there is some really encouraging news from PHE that they're continuing to look for, but I'll talk about that later in terms of ongoing development. And um, I was very privileged to work with, with Glenn and a whole group of fine people on the Passport for Life stuff until they kicked me off the team. And then uh, I wasn't privileged anymore. Um, I'll also just mention the play tools. Have anyone seen the play tools a little bit? Use them a bit? Okay, I'll just, I'm just going to show them briefly because again, they're all free available online. You can grab them from there. Then we're going to spend a little bit of time trying to link physical literacy and phys ed. And then I'm hoping that we get to that co-creation and essentially I'd like you to try and create some assessments with some other people in the room. Hopefully then we can share all those um, either on this, uh, on the EverActive website or whichever and I don't mind collating those or whatever works. So that's the plan. Um, and right at the beginning of that was Robbie says. Okay, so what do you know? Um, so with your, if we'll just roughly go groups of six again for right now at your table. Later on, we'll split up into grade levels or where you want to look at so we can play around with that. But for right now, I just want you to discuss what do you know about physical literacy? What do you know? Have a brief discussion. What's important? And then what do you know about assessment? Are there principles, are there tenants? What have you, this can be experiential knowledge, it can be something you've read, something you live by. But as your table, I need you to come up with three critical elements or principles for each as a table. Is that making sense so far? Okay, game on. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. Three for each. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see this. I, uh, I raised it up mostly just so I could write on it, but it works. Okay, I just want to get each group's three things for physical literacy as we go along just to see what you know, because, you know, you look intelligent, but I'm not sure. So uh, let's start with the group back there, physical literacy first. We kind of did a definition that incorporated our three components, so... Building blocks and skills to apply to lifelong activity and enjoyment of movement. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to really summarize here a lot. Yeah, Pull that one better. So it's building blocks and skills, lifelong oh, score. <laughs> See, ha have you seen the kids sport physical literacy commercials? So I'm, there's, the, there's a guy sitting, I just have to share this. There's a guy sitting in the, in the stands at a pool and he's working, right? And then someone's like, ah, oh, crap, leg cramp. And he's like, and he goes and picks up the life preserver and he goes. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> and then the, yeah, anyways, sorry. My bad. Okay, uh, next one. Or that, that was your. The big summary was that piece. Okay, I like that. So building blocks and skills, lifelong activity and joy. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's keep moving up middle group here. I'm just going to add what's new. We had some points about building blocks as well. 
Right. And, and just so you know, just even if it's something that the other groups have already said, just repeat it because I'll just check it off on here. I won't write it. And um, the importance of physical literacy for um, lifelong journey. Okay, I'm going to put that journey piece in here. Don't stop believing. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of what we said. Okay. Uh, you need to, just the ability to transfer it. That's the only thing that would happen to transfer skills. Okay, good. Body and mind awareness. Confidence or incompetence. By the way, I blame my grade one teacher, Mrs. Kelly, for my writing. So. <laughs> we have a positive environment. So learner centric, that, that type of thing, is that okay? And final group, even if I have to just check on here, you'll get to start first with uh, assessment, so. <clears throat> and which was the last one? Okay. Okay, so we've got, we've got a pretty good list and we'll, we'll come back to this come back to this later I'll stick it up on the wall so you can use it afterwards let's start with the back group what are some principles around assessment and I purposefully left this one quite vague I know there's some questions here and there but that's okay what do we got form and function so you need to have a form and you need to have a function Okay. So this would be what you're, you need to be assessing the form and the function of movement. Is that what I'm getting? Okay. Okay. So, so can I say then, then continuous? Does that capture that a little bit? That it's continuous assessment of the process and the progress? Yeah, okay. And keep in mind, we're, we're packaging some pretty big things in very little words, so that's okay, Brian. Okay, well, I also think that, and this is, you know, unit dependent or whatever, but you're also assessing the product because for example, you know, a gymnastics routine or a dance routine, you know, you're looking at stuff that you're assessing again on the final product, what do they come up with, you know? Right. So that's the that has to be looked at as well. Okay. Other ones, we won't go table by table, we'll just go all over the place because that's what you're doing anyway, so I'm rolling with it. At least on the uh, the wording of different things for reporting methods. Um, how we want to use that Merging, developing, acquired, accomplished, yeah. As opposed to insufficient. Yeah. 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 As opposed to you suck. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you suck. You kind of suck. You don't really suck. Because you're less sucky than before. That's good. Okay, and I completely forgot what else I was going to write. But reporting methods. Um, oh, I was going to say categories, etc. Okay. Okay. Uh, a couple other ones, yep. 
students being involved in the assessment, co-constructing the criteria, being, you know, peer assessing, self-assessing, having those tools. Okay. I'm just going to encompass all that in student engagement, but that's absolutely critical to assessment. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah. Benchmark. Okay. And I think uh, observation. You have to be good at observing to see what, or know what you're even looking for, and then be good at observing it to assess it. Yeah. No, you need to have observation skills. Absolutely. Glenn? Yeah. So, um, criteria, expectations, and I'll just kind of put shared, because not only students, but parents too, right? Community, perhaps, yep. And planning needs to be connected to the, the outcome, so backwards planning, however you talk about it, but you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. And just because it moves doesn't mean you have to assess it. Not everything <laughs> is accessible. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think we're, unless there's a burning desire to put something else on here, we'll come back to this in a bit. Um, it's pretty good. You're, you're as smart as you look, so that's, that's good. It's impressive. Okay. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of, and you've, you've captured most of this so I can go fairly quickly, but just a couple key fundamentals, reminders of, of physical literacy. If you look at the components, Right? This is one way of categorizing them, okay, which is the way that PHE Canada has done and with, with Glenn's work in that too, is that you have the fundamental movement skills, okay, which are basic to all forms of physical activity. Run, jump, throw, dodge. I saw pictures up on the website of Glenn's stuff all over the wall. Awesome. You've got all those components that you can do individually. You can combine them. You go all the way through. You have different levels of that. Obviously, a throw at uh, four years old is going to be different than a four uh, throw at uh, six or seven years old, which is going to be different further on, and that's okay because this is a journey, right? We've got a fitness component. Fitness contributes to these pieces, okay, as we go along. Um, we've got the living skills, okay, which this is where we're trying to get at that affective piece. How are you actually living this? Do you know your own body? Do you know how it functions, right? Are you able to interrelate with other people? in order to achieve different things as you go along. Okay, and then you have the idea of active participation. That's great that you have all this other stuff, but are you doing it? And are you doing it in different environments? Right, are you doing it um, in different ways? Are you doing it in uh, not just different environments, but a variety of activities, those type of things? So these things are important when we look at what we're looking at. That whole idea, I think to me, this is the heart of physical activity is that competence and confidence and how you build that through, because that's the relationship between that thinking, feeling, moving individual, okay? Um, and we also have that idea of motivation, that, that joy of movement. How do we assess, not, not assess that necessarily, but how do we tap into that? How do we know if someone has joy of movement, and do we care? Is that one of the non-assessables? And it's very, very important to realize again that this is life course and it's applicable to all. If we go back to the challenge from Margaret Whitehead, we want to ensure that all can move further on their journey of physical literacy. And so we're not talking about, here we are, we're done. So um, one of my students came up with this and I, I've been using this a lot because it makes sense to me. It may not, but you can let me know if it's different. But essentially, if you take just physical activity, that's great. But we add phys ed to that because that adds that learning knowledge part. That's why the second word is education. It's a learning. If we're doing those right, if we have physical activity, and the reason this came out is I asked my students to just say, can you define for me physical activity, phys ed, physical literacy, what's the difference? Maybe I should ask you to do that. But essentially they came up, one group came up with this equation that if we start with physical activity, we add quality physical education, we should get people who are moving forward on their physical literacy journey. And I put that little caveat at the back there. It doesn't automatically equal. There is no end point for physical literacy. It's not like, oh, now I'm physically literate. See ya. I'm done. It's a progression. You can always improve yourself just like with literacy or media literacy. Right, two years ago I'd, I'd, I was convinced I would never touch Twitter. 
then I thought, oh, okay, someone said, no, you should really be on there. So I got on and then I'm completely, um, I have fallen for Twitter. Um, that's a development in literacy too, right? You read a certain style of book. If all you ever do is read a certain style of book, there's room for movement. Go to a play, go to a movie, different things. So it's important to have that there. Additionally, and, and I took this from Margaret Whitehead again, but the idea of that cradle to grave. So we have the preschool phase where we want motor development. We need to foster it, support it, and encourage it. I was sharing a, a little story with the group at the end about, you know, we, we talk about um, literacy of uh, physical literacy and be able to move to music. That's natural. That's, that's ingrained in us, but it gets pushed out. And I remember my, my son when he was maybe, well, he could walk, so he was 11 or 12 months old, maybe 13 months old. And I was playing the Gypsy Kings, a nice Latin beat music. He's got his hands. This is, you, you can tell how old I am because the speakers were this big. Okay. He's got his hands on a speaker and he's just shaking his diaper. And he's like directly to the music. No one taught him that. And so we have, but it has to be supported, encouraged. Do we just put our kids in front of the TV or do we go out and kick a ball around with them in the backyard? Do we play with them? Do we wrestle with them to get that physical stuff? I wrestled with my nephew this past week when we were camping. He has never been taught how to wrestle. He ripped my face off because he just <laughs> grab and go. No, no, that's not how it works. You have to develop that and encourage it. Then we get that, the, the early years education plus the elementary. We want to nurture those fundamentals. We want to develop those, okay? Looking at the motivation. There's the confidence and competence again. More knowledge and moving on from knowledge into understanding. We want to get through this. Once we get into secondary, we should, now I know we don't, but we should if we're doing things properly, the fundamentals should be there. So now we can start to contextualize those. What does a throw look like in curling? What does a throw look like in cricket? What does a throw look like in just playing catch or throwing a pen into the garbage? We should be able to get to that point there, okay? And in a range of physical activity and a range of context or environments, we want to mix that up. And by the way, I know, um, please don't feel you have to sit during it. We'll move around in a little bit, but just stand, walk, whatever you need to do. Um, I know you people, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Then immediately after school, there should be some consolidation. People realize, I like this, I can do this. Because I like this and can do this, I'm gonna try something different and it switches, there's more self-motivation, and we see that starting in secondary as well, right? We see that wanting more choice, and it's that self-participation. They're gonna go in and do that kind of stuff. What would physically, what does physical literacy look like for you right now? I just left the question mark because I wanted to ask you. What does it look like? If you follow that progression, and I'll give you an example just to stir things up. I used to be, in my immediate post-school, was all team sports. Okay, I played varsity volleyball, I played basketball, I played hockey. All team sports, go, go, go. Once I had my kids, team sports was hard to do because it was very hard to fit in the schedule. I completely switched over and, and got into cycling and mountain biking and doing things that I could do whenever I wanted to because I could do them at five in the morning when the kids were still sleeping or I could wake the kids up at five and put them in the trailer and go. So that's how my physical literacy changed at that point in time. I'm now at a point where my kids are teenagers where I don't have to adapt my activities to them anymore. I can go do what I want to do. So that's a different piece for me. Any, any other examples of your own physical literacy adapting, changing? Yeah. Uh, learning about yoga and the importance of that for stress relief. Okay. Yeah. And flexibility and getting older. I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm very <laughs> flexible. Yeah. Uh, just going to the gym, like before high school or after high school, I had never gone to a gym before. And then after that, the, with work and everything. Yeah. Do that rather than playing soccer on. Yeah. Right. And you make those you make those choices. A couple others. Yeah. Having to give yeah. up what you used to do because you're starting to get too old to do it. Yeah. Okay. Cheerleader. Yeah, like cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't still be tumbling. <laughs> okay. I'm coaching my you know you say soccer for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a different piece because you're then applying that those pieces, right? To me, it's um, you know, I, I was taught to throw and I was taught to swing a bat and I was taught to 
and then getting invited out to play cricket. Never played cricket before, but you know what? I can throw and I can catch and I can swing. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go play. Yeah, and I think that on this other one here, we had that idea of transfer of skills. I think you start to play around with that. You certainly do that immediately, but you also play around with that as an adult. What can I do? What can I try that's new? Right? Especially if you have that confidence and competence again. Older adults. It's, there's a different piece. I mentioned my dad earlier, right? He's still a very active guy, um, but that activity has changed. How he does that has changed a bit, but he's still a physically literate individual, right? He even learned how to dance at a late age. And actually, prime example, um, my dad grew up in southern Alberta where the deepest thing was an irrigation ditch, never learned how to swim. So he learned how to swim when he was 50, sort of. But he still just sinks a lot. So, but so we have this development as we go through. So these are important things to remember as we go along. This is our role. This is where we are. As educators, this is for the most part where we are. I know there's a few in here who are not educators. Um, uh, someone was talking about working with, with um, uh, post-cancer treatment patients and stuff too. So you're working in the adult area. But the one cool thing about physical education in public schools, it is, is the only thing that will reach every single kid in our society. So we need to promote that more in terms of saying this is the only thing that works. Um, from assessment, from an ass assessment perspective, there's a number of things that we need to consider. This is, I'm sure you've seen this diagram before, but this Alberta Assessment Consortium, this is really what we do all the time. So if we look, nice, okay. We're starting with the program of studies. Okay, what are they gonna learn? How will we know that learning has happened? That's really where assessment begins. How do I know that what I taught was learned? Or how do I know that what I wanted to be learned actually happened? Then, how do we collect evidence? This is what your tools are, whatever you're using. What activities are gonna happen? How are they gonna demonstrate it? And this is the difference. We've got the formative feedback loop here, kicking out to summative feedback if we need to share it for an audience outside of the relationship between teacher and student. Um, and then what are the next steps? What is missing in here, I think, is this is also your evaluation of your teaching. Did I do what I wanted to do? What am I changing? What am I making different? Um, I mentioned this before. Okay, this is the original taxonomy wheel. We've got all this kind of piece. And there's, and you know, we could, we could erase most of these words and put down all of our own stuff. I mean, we really could. Some, some of them transfer, some of them go through. Um, you know, play ends up over there in synthesis for some reason. So we have that. And then we have this piece here too, where we're constantly creating things. We're remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating. You think of a strategic situation in a game, you need to remember the rules of the game. But not only that, you need to understand how they're applied in the game. Then you actually need to apply them. That's called strategy. You analyze, did my strategy work or not? What do I need to change? I evaluate that and I create something new. It doesn't happen, now I do this, now I do that, now I do this. It happens together as we go along. Learning is much more complex than we would like it to be. Yeah. Is there anywhere on there in that cycle that talks about what do I do Um, yeah, essentially, um, because if you've, that's where this, this feedback loop keeps going. It's not explicit in there, but I think that's where that would, that's where that would fall. Yeah. And to some extent too, in the summative area, when you're acting, I mean, the phrase they use here is the self, the teacher as the judge. Okay, you're sharing that out. That's that opportunity too. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a second, I hope. We also have actually some very good pages in our program of studies and the guide to implementation that talk about what we need to do when we assess. And I'll just go through these very briefly, but we have certain guiding principles. Assessment should be continuous, and we had that on here as well, right? We have general outcomes, specific outcomes. We need to encourage learning, and we also evaluate our own teaching through continuous assessment. It needs to be collaborative. You had that on the sheet as well. Comprehensive, is there a variety of activities? DA just stands for developmentally appropriate. Are they the right activities for that age? Are you trying to teach uh, grade twos to play five on five basketball with a size seven ball and a 10 foot hoop? Yeah. Hello? 
yeah, not successful. Um, then there's that there has to be criteria. It needs to be shared, engaged with students helping to set that, communicated with students and parents. And so am I going too fast? I'm just, I just want to set some things so we can get to uh, creating a little bit here. Um, the idea of observation skills. What are you going to observe? What's the criteria? How will you record that observation? Is it just I'm going to look and I'm going to put it down? Do you have a rubric? How much time? What are you looking at? Then obviously you're focusing on outcomes, selecting an example. In other words, and the best example I thought um, I heard of assessment doing it right is um, how many people have their driver's license? How many people went into that driver's test not knowing anything about it? <laughs> it, it, it does happen, but you can, it's very well communicated. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to parallel park. You're going to have to drive in traffic. You're going to have to park on a hill. And so you know what the criteria are. They're set. There's an example. This is how you do it properly. And you're informed about it and you go do it. It's a great model, okay? Even though um, my son doesn't do uh, multiple choice tests very well, so it took him 13 times to pass his learners, which I'm fine with because the questions are ridiculous. In the rain, should you press your brakes kind of hard, sort of hard, really hard, or not at all? How do you choose the best answer? I've got ABS, I just pressed the brake. So anyways, um, I'm gonna skip this one, but this, there's just a ton of different, and I know we could come up with all these here because you've got performance assessments, you've got observations, oral communication, inventories, written tests, everything else. These are some examples off of some EverActive Schools materials, okay, off assessment pieces of some different ways of assessing. So this first little learning log, you're essentially assessing that, that active participation. What are they doing at home? Are they participating actively? This next one is the basic skills. It's just simply a checklist. And I know you can't see it very well, but there's a first observation and a second observation. Overhand throw, catching, kicking, batting, and you may continue to move through that, okay? Directly linked to curriculum as we go along. Uh, this is an example of grade one, okay? Looking at that, that effort, okay? Outcome D, very simple. How did you do in terms of I tried everything and I encouraged others? Um, I, I really like this one, again, because you have different observations. So this is catching. Now we tend to think, okay, guess what? It's my, I'll just be facetious, but it's my catching unit. So I'm going to evaluate your catching now. It happens to be October. We're not going to touch it again. But how many times do you do catching? You might play ultimate. You might play slow pitch. Right? You might play uh, whatever. You have lots of different forms of catching. So there's multiple opportunities to assess that. So this one is just a simple... Yes or not yet. Now I still like to move towards more of the rubric that we had earlier, but this is a good way to start. So let me talk about Passport for Life very briefly. How are we doing? Too much information? Oh, that was a lot of information. Okay. No, that last slide, uh, yeah, going through there, you mentioned that we continually look at a lot of these uh, little check boxes, I guess, from the curriculum here. And they're constantly, constantly like repeating throughout all the different units. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to a, an outcomes-based reporting method, and they said, "Okay, well, you need to supply this." And so I do it over and over and over again. Uh, how 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 do you want me to go about putting this down? And so that's a conversation at that level right now that's going on. Absolutely. And, and people are kind of looking at it and saying, "Well, you're you're right. You you're catching you." On motor locomotion over and over and over again. How how do you always report that and then put that onto a document that right now says at elementary I S P E or E or at junior high right now what you percent. Yeah. So Yeah, and how does this you know, th this is the the conflict between that formative assessment and the summative assessment. Right? Is to say, you know, I can do this all formatively and now I have to, you know, in junior high I have to attach a percent on this. You know, how do you do that? And we, we all do it, but what does it really mean? Like, what does 85% in phys ed really mean? Or maybe just to communicate to parents that it's a snapshot. Like, at this moment yeah. in time, this is what the grade that we're putting on it, but it's yeah. fluid, like Robbie's saying. And that was a, 
that was a huge discussion when, when we worked on the Passport for Life, <coughs> is that please, 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 and you, when you go on the website, you'll see it all over the words on there, this is not a report card. <coughs> this is not transfer to report card mark. This is a snapshot of where your child is right now with physical literacy. It's not intended to be a mark, it's intended to be a tool of improvement. I look at, the example I use for this is the, and whether you love them or hate them, but the highest level of achievement tests, the aid slot for, for language arts. It's not a report card mark. It's simply, if for lack of a better term, it's a diagnostic tool. It helps you and it gets other teachers to help you decide where is this child? What is their reading level at? What is their writing level at? This is the same thing, what is their movement level at? Where's their physical literacy? And then how can we move forward? So essentially it's, it's, it was designed to really help teachers do this. Um, that's, that's what all these things essentially mean. But it also, so, so you get a, a, a passport and you get this summary of what happens in, in fundamental movement skills, in fitness, in living skills, in active participation. So what? What are you going to do with it? And then there's resources and supports to do that. So one example is, if you would, let's say you do this with your, you know, you've got a, you're a grade three teacher. You've got a group of kids coming, you're not really sure what they did in grade two. And uh, you do the physical literacy assessment and you notice that every single kid in your class plays hockey or ringette and curls. You're in a small town, that's just the way it goes. Everybody curls, everybody does hockey and ringette. Do you need to spend a lot of time on the ice in grade three? Maybe not, because they're already getting that somewhere. Now maybe you can try a different ice experience. Maybe you need to spend some time sledding. But it's an idea of tailoring things to your students' real needs. Um, I used to teach in uh, northeast end of Edmonton, and um, I had kids who had never been in or on snow. I mean, they literally never been in or on because they would get in a car and be driven to school and they'd get out and they'd run out dressed like this. Not so nice, but you know, and they'd go in. And then, so I had to find mitts. I had to find snow pants. They'd, they'd never snowshoed before. They'd never even just run in the snow before. And so if I didn't know that, how am I gonna set up my year? But so often we just go, okay, well, my year is the same. I've got these units I'm gonna do. And, and I know the teachers in here are not doing this, but. You know what, it's soccer in the fall because that's soccer season and then we're going to start so as soon as it rains, we're going to get into volleyball and then uh, volleyball ends and it's basketball, throw in a little bit of badminton before track and field, slow pitch, yeah, the year's done. And we know that that's not right. We know it doesn't work. Doug, I know yeah. the Passport for Life is set up for grades, like mostly elementary. Three to six right now, yeah. but so they're working for more. So, um, Something that you can do to find out more if you're not using the Passport for Life because you're a secondary present teacher. On, a, on the Everactive site, we do have so, like a checklist, an inventory uh, that you would give to students at the beginning of the year. And they would say, yeah, I've tried bocce. Uh, no, I haven't tried bocce, uh, but I'm interested. I don't really care uh, to play bocce at all for the rest of my life. No, I don't, it's not that exact yeah. wording, but... but those kind of inventories, if you, you're not using the passport for life, are really important to be Yeah, of the year. and there's, I would highly recommend, even if you are doing junior high, or how many junior high high school folks do we have in here? Okay, um, I would sign up for this anyways. From a three to six, I would sign up for it, and then adapt it. There's a pilot one, right? Yeah, oh good, you're in a pilot, yeah, because there is a pilot of the seven to nine, yeah. right? The, the vision was that, ultimately, if you could have something developed for each division, Right, one, two, three, four. You could go and you could, you would have that assessment. You do it at least twice a year, if not three times a year. You decide how you're going to improve things. You move on. Then basically, you pass that over to the next teacher. They can continue to build. Because wouldn't it be awesome if you know? Like I would spend my first when I was teaching junior high. I'd spend my first two weeks doing physical literacy assessments and a lot of cooperative team building games because you want to build that spirit up. You do those together in your first year, and that sets the tone for your whole year. You know what you're going to do. You know where you're going to go with what you're doing. So um, I, think the, I think the opportunities to get on that pilot are closed, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll, the website is here in a moment. But um, So essentially what this is, is there are, there are actual, and Glenn shared a number of the assessments of the fitness skills. Okay? The movement skills, there are three assessments there as well. 
Living skills and active participation are a questionnaire for students. So it's self-report. But for example, and, and Tracy shared almost the exact language that we used on the living skills question, or the active participation. It might say, you know, do you participate in ICE activities? Are you interested in ICE activities? Do you not care at all? You get a sense of where your, your kid's motivation is coming from. You get a sense of what they might not want to do. If later on they're like, yeah, I tried it, now I really want to do more, you've managed to flip that motivation switch a little bit. So it's, it's assessment that way. Um, so let's get up and do this one just because, uh, Glenn, you didn't do this one yesterday, did you? The lateral bound? Oh, you did? Okay, so we don't need to do it. Rats. It's okay. Um, what's that? Uh, that's right, we can assess. Um, did anyone try the, the ultimate tests on this one? The ultimate, your own height? Yeah, good. How, how was that? Art. Yeah. But, but that's just a prime example of, in terms of that life course physical literacy, you might be able to do that when you're at your, your peak physically, um, but you may not be able to do it later. It also depends what you do. Do you do any lateral bounding? I mean, for me personally, that's how I walk. I just kind of bound. <laughs> so I'm really good at it, but others might not be. So um, the, the key thing here, and I know you went through this, so that's, that's good, and I can stop talking. Um, are these four categories and, and the language that's there. Accomplished does not mean finished. It means it's an accomplished movement. There's always room for moving forward. It's also very easy. If you take the difference of if you watch a four-year-old run, I guarantee you everyone in this room could pick out two or three things that they can do to improve their run. If you watch Usain Bolt run, I guarantee you none of us would be able to pick out anything that he can improve. But his coach can. Because even though he's accomplished, there's still little things. So the better you get at something, the more accomplished you get at, the harder it is to make improvement, which is why judging people on improvement in phys ed is a tricky, slippery slope. But So what I want to do essentially, um, in the 13 minutes I have left, um, is, so the revision is here, um, the launch, I, I, I would have shown you the website, but because it's going through various phases, I can't. Um, and then the development of the grade seven, eight program. So the Passport for Life Thingers register, I don't know if it's still open to register for the seven, eight, nine pilot. But again, if you, I would just sign up for the three, five, four, six. And then at least you have access to materials and can adapt. Yes, yeah. So what I, what I wanna get you to do is to move into groups, oh yeah, play tools, sorry. Um, a number of people mentioned they've looked at these. There's where it's available, and again, this PowerPoint is on the website. Um, they look kind of like this, they're, they're different tools. So this is a, what Play Basic looks like, and it's developing, acquired, and then what the confidence level is. This is to be assessed by someone, and there's, there's booklets on what to look for and what to do. This is just the assessment form. Okay, so they're, they're useful to go through. This one's intended for age seven and up. Okay, you're looking at level one, run, throw, kick, balance. Level two, run, throw, kick, balance. Um, this is play fun, okay? This is looking at these different tasks. Can you do all these different pieces as you go along? Um, again, initial, emerging, competent, proficient. And they've got developing and acquired as kind of the broad categories. So there's, there's tools out there for you to use for sure. So um, I'm gonna combine these these pieces and, and what I'd like you to do, you can go in pairs or in triumvirates, it's up to you. But um, if you can pair with someone who is at least a similar division, if not similar grade, I've got sheets with all of the curriculum outcome summary sheets K to 12 here, and I should have, I've got about 30 of these, so um, you can grab one of those for, for reference. Knowing the four categories of, that we have in physical literacy, okay, fundamental movement skills, fitness, living skills, active participation, take a moment and just where do the phys ed outcomes in the physical literacy categories overlap? Do they coincide? Are they the same thing? Um, and then to move a little further, choose, whoops, I changed it from one to two. So choose one specific outcome that fits in a category and choose one, to, you only have time to work on one. Choose one and how would you assess it? So using a physical literacy lens, I'll say it that way, in that category, find an outcome how would you go about assessing that? You, if you want to make up a rubric, that's fine. If it's a performance task, 
some kind of creation piece. I've also got some sheets here with just some reminders of some guiding principles for assessments, some guiding principles for physical literacy, the Alberta Assessment Consortium and Bloom's Taxonomy. Just if you want these, they're up here. I only printed 15 of them though. Um, and so, is that making sense a little bit? I know where I'm very sorry I'm running out of time, but um, I should have spent less time on the earlier stuff maybe. You'll let me know in the evaluation. This really sucked. Um, <laughs> So find a partner or pair. Can we, can we just, just so we can see, can you stand up if you are K to three? K to three area, that's, doesn't matter if you're teaching it or working with that, that age level. Okay, K to three, so take a look around who's K to three, who you might wanna connect with, okay? And then those people can sit down or you group together, whatever. And uh, four to six, four to six-ish couple, some are fully elementary, okay? Seven to nine, some seven to nines. Excellent, and then high school, high school, no exclusive high school, a little bit. So just talk to people around you, decide, like I said, no bigger than a group of three, and let's see if in the next 10 minutes you can design an assessment. Okay, just a temporary halt here. It's noon. So I hate to interrupt, but I will anyways. Um, just, just a question for you in terms of where to proceed. Um, initially, I'd hope to, that you'd have a sort of maybe rough finished product that we could type up and then send back out for editing, etc. Would you rather A, take this back with you, play with it a little bit, doesn't matter if you've got a group of three and you send back three different versions, that's fine, we can smurf them. Or would you like to just pass in what you've got now as option B and we can go through and type it up and then send it out for further revision? <laughs> What's that? Be emerging. We're at the emerging stage. Okay. So what I would ask is that within your group, um, could you exchange email addresses or Google Docs sharing? Does anyone use Google Docs, Google Drive? Okay. Because I can very easily, if you want to send it to me, I can post it there and then your group can edit that on its own if you're interested that way. Um, I don't want to lose this start of something. So if you can talk with your group on how you want to continue, and then um, maybe talk to Tracy or Joyce about what you want to do with that. We're not going to hound you for anything, but um, it'd be great to have kind of a little bit of a compendium of these to start to start going and get through. Um, on a different note, I want, I, when I went around, I noticed a number of people had the, the one-page lesson planning template. Um, I stumbled across a different lesson planning template from the UK, um, which I find absolutely awesome. And so I just wanted to share it with you. Tracy's seeing if she can get copies printed up so you have a paper, paper copy. I can share that with, with uh, Tracy to put on. So it looks like this, and it, it's interesting. The, I can't remember what Ofsted stands for, but it's like the, it, it's like the government. Thank you. Office of the Standards of Education, who actually sends inspectors into schools to evaluate and do everything there. And the statement is this. Um, I'll pull it off of here. Is that... Sorry, this computer is different, there we go. Um, Ofsted don't want a lesson plan, but evidence of a planned lesson, which is a subtle kind of distinction. So this is what it looks like. Not there, that's what it looks like. Um, and I find it's a really effective, especially if you're a visual person, but it's also like, how many people write out a full, complete, one big page or two page lesson plan for every class they teach? Oh yeah, of course. Of course, <laughs> good. All right, we all do. Good answer, Justin. <laughs> what this does is it gives you that, what's the big picture you're trying to achieve? So maybe for a particular unit of study or a particular series of classes, you might have the same big picture all the way through. Then you're looking at what are the objectives of this specific, uh, specific lesson? What do you want them to learn? Those directly transfer to your specific outcomes. What do you want to have happening? How are you engaging students? What's that stickability piece? What do you want them to, to get? You know, when I teach throwing in football, I go grip, rip, whip. It sticks, it works. Okay, then um, AFL is uh, attainment for learning in, in the UK, but I would apply that to how are you doing assessment for learning? How are you doing that, that feedback loop within there? Then there's your keywords, okay? Moving along, uh, if you follow the arrows, moving along this way, keywords. 
How are you differentiating for the students' needs in your class? Then these are your learning episodes. What's actually happening in the lesson? Is it teacher-led, student-led? What's going on? I really, I, you can take it or leave it, whichever. I just thought I'd share it with you because I saw some of the other templates there. It's, um, yeah, I, I like it. It's good. Um, I found it on, and now you can probably tell me what this is too. Um, I, yeah, this is from the, he's, that's his uh, initial piece. I got it off of the TES website, TES.com. It's another UK piece. I believe, I can't remember what TES stands for, Teacher Educational Services or something like that. It's this huge network. You have to sign in, but it's free, and then you get access to all these different, um, all these different things. And there's another format that I asked Tracy to put on the back of the other one, which is more of just, just a list straight down, using the same progression, but just a list. So just a different way to organize your time. Um, I apologize that the assessment, for me, I felt that the assessment session was very much rushed. We could have taken a lot more time and have more time to do this, so I apologize for that. But hopefully there is some, at least some dialogue, some discussion, um, maybe something new, something tweaked in your, in your mind that we went through. So um, thanks for having me here this morning, and I'm looking forward to lunch. Yay. <laughs>